Good morning, everyone. I hope it's Sunday. Find you all doing well. Before I get into the message today, I'd like to say a big hello to some very important people. Molly from out of Illinois, Misty and David from Somerset, Kentucky, Stephanie from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Reverend Don and her partner Heather from Daytona, Bill and Ray from Portsmouth, Ohio, and Bob come in contact with a young guy around 2021, I think. He adopted us as dad and daddy. He even goes by an AKA, also known as Tyler Allen Austin. He's from Rwanda. And here's to you, my friend, as I raise my glass to you. We love you, son. This coronavirus has claimed 800, uh, 780,000 people globally, 171,000 in the U.S., 23.1 million people is infected with it globally, 14.1 million has recovered from it. We are still in the pandemic. And this morning, we are going to go in prayer for the children as they start the school. And I don't know why they started school at this time. They should have let it go until January. The pandemic is still out there. So let's go in prayer for the children this morning. Shoes off. Stand if you're able, hands to the side, face toward the sky. You are now in the presence of God. Pour them shoes off, for thou standest now in the midst of holy. Ask them to bless these children as they journey back to school. Amen. And good morning, God. Some asked, some told me that it amazes them how I can interact with the spirits. People, you can too. Just ask them to come down and be with you. December 25th, as we celebrate Christmas, I always have an extra table, a chair at the table. This is for Jesus. After all, December 25th, we celebrate his birthday, so why not invite Jesus down to have some dinner with you? It's his birthday. In reality, it's not his birthday. He was born in the month of April. But we put aside December 25th as his birthday. And if you want these spirits to come down, they will. They'll come down and sit with you. They will often talk to you. Just invite them down to be with you. Pardon. Take time looking for them to the little. He's good in bringing some people with him, someone with him. Ah, Moses. And I do believe I hear something around the door. What? It's going to be a tough one. All righty. Oh, 
said, Where's the way you might stand? He looks like a man of war. Stand right there. Right in the corner. Okay. This question was brought up one time. How do you become born again? And what does it mean by washed in the blood of the Lamb? I hope this morning I can answer those two questions. All through the New Testament, God did everything to try to make, you know, His presence known to people. He split the Red Sea for them. He brought down the walls of Jericho. He even promised that his son was going to be born. For 8,000 years, they waited for that son to be born. It never came. Some gave up, but some continued to pray and believe. In the stables of Bethlehem, as told in Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that son come to be the promised Messiah. In a dream, Joseph, an angel told Joseph to take him out of Bethlehem and take him into Nazareth so he can become a Nazarene because he was hunting. They were after to kill him. There on the cross as he died, accept him as the Savior, the Lord Jesus, God's Son, who was born from a virgin mother. Just accept that. This blood that he spilt off the cross was for you and me. Accept it. Reach out. Go to the cross. Dip your finger into the blood spill. After all, one little spill was for you, one spill was for me. Just one little drop is all it takes. To be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Back in the Old Testament, they slaughtered lambs, and oftentimes their homes were washed in the animal's blood. This was to Forgive them for their sins. But we don't do that anymore. The Lamb of God is Jesus upon that cross. His blood was spilt for you and for me. To accept it. To go to the cross. Accept Him as your Savior. Because after all, this is what He did. He saved us from hell from the lake of fire. He is our Savior. He is the one that saves us from the lake of fire. And once you accept this, and you apply the blood that was spilled from the cross, you are becoming born again. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb that died upon that cross. People, I can't, I don't know what it's to say except to accept him and to claim the blood. That's all he's done you have to do. Some say when Jesus came to be, he did not change the laws of the Old Testament. But yeah, he did. He changed the law. He says, I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill. Destroy and change is two different words. He did not destroy the laws, he changed them. For he says, You have heard it in the old times, an eye for an eye. But I say unto you, Raise your hand at no one, for the vengeance is mine, 
So he did change the law without destroying them. We are now living under his grace. The laws in the Old Testament were some of the harshest laws. That, well, some of them goes beyond the imagination. Wearing clothes of two different fabrics, like a pair of shorts, t-shirt, different fabrics, was a sin worthy of death. Sicy children to their parents were to be put to death. Women, when they got out of childbearing age, the husband could put her to death and he could go looking for a younger one to have more children. Women were to stand back into the church. The men were up here in the church. Women were not to participate in the church service. They were there to serve their husbands. Go into the kitchen, get all the meals fixed after they get the service done. We don't live under them laws anymore, people. We live under his grace. The man who died upon that cross. When we accept the, him as a savior and we claim the blood, we don't look back toward the life that we just stepped out of. We don't continue to live an ungodly life. We continue to do pleasant things in his sight. Be humble and kind to each other. Don't condemn and judge. As it says in John 3.17, For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn, but by through him the world may be saved. We as Christians has a job. We don't condemn and judge. What we do is we try to bring people over to God. Win and souls for him. Be humble and kind. Don't condemn or judge that person for who they are now. Because with your help, they can come over and claim the blood and accept Jesus as their Savior and claim the blood that was spilled on that uh, off that cross and to the ground. That's how you become born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb that died for you and me upon that cross. Claim it. Claim that blood. And accept Him as the Savior. I'll drag you over. Now. Thanks, Moses. Moses has got a head down there. Now, you're going to see at the end of the year while I am doing this and how you can do it too. You put this sickness under your feet and through God you can absolutely beat it to the ground and put it under your feet. Thank you. He's got the head in there. And as it rears its head through God, you can push it right back down to the ground, right under your feet. And that's where you are, bladder cancer, under our feet right now. You have no more power. Through the name of the Lord Jesus, that's where you are, under our feet. You're a Lucifer. Take it with you. And get out. Yeah. People, we can put things under our feet. God does not want us to go through this sickness, and we can put it under our feet through Him. I was thinking this morning, oh, I like to give loose for a black eye. He liked it. He says, You're going to get loose for a black eye on your own, you're going to get a black eye. But he said through me, we can stomp Lucifer. Thank you, God. We can stomp him into the ground. Claim that blood. Accept him as the Lord's Savior. And you can push Lucifer under your feet. <laughs>
also. And all this sickness is gone. But we're going to have to believe, people. We're going to have to believe. And I know someone out there has got a sore shoulder this morning. And as I rub my shoulder, I'm rubbing yours. I'm doing this for you. Thank you, Lord. Heal that shoulder, Lord, I pray right now, Jesus. Heal that shoulder. Mm, heal that shoulder, Lord. And that sweet Holy Spirit, our comforter, the one that comforts during times like these. God is great, people. Get to know him. Get to know his son and died upon that cross. Rose from that tomb. It's now sitting at the right side of the Father. One day he's going to come back. And he's going to catch a lot of people off guard. He said, I'll come like a thief in the night. Don't let me catch you sleeping. Sleeping means to be weak in spirit, to be weak. Remain strong, believe in. Pray. Morning, noon, evening. Pray. Then be born again. Claim the blood. Be washed in the blood of the Lamb that died upon that cross. This is a hellish time that we're living in with this coronavirus, and I still don't have very much knowledge about it. Except it's a huge family of viruses. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, part of it. Common cold. The delta gamma is the most hardest to fight, and that's what this is now. Some is straight out of Revelations. Okay, but it is in straight out of Revelations. We should have been more prepared for this. But I still believe what God told me. The foolish of man. In that, how does it become transmitted to humans? Cats, camels. They thought that that was the SARS and the MERS. SARS is severe acute respiratory syndrome. The MERS is Middle East respiratory syndrome. Now, the big one, coronavirus. God is at work with it because 14.1 million people would not have recovered from it if he's not at work. So I thank you for that. That's the only thing I can tell you this morning, people. It's become worse than that blood. It's easy. Just claim it. Claim that blood. Do pleasant things in the sight of God. Forget that life that you came out of. You were born again to a brand new life. Too many. When they come over here, they look back at the bars and the nightclubs that they went to, the drugs that they took, the alcohol they drank, and they begin the journey right back over here. And then come Sunday, they journey back over here. Monday through Saturday, they journey right back over here. Now, is that pleasing in God's sight? No. Because you're not forgetting. You want to stay over here. Not over here on this side. Born again. One of these days when he comes back. Are you going to be ready? 
you ascend it up to heaven, and likewise, he's going to come right back. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be over here in a brand new life, or over here a life you can't forget? And if you call over here, pray. Ask for forgiveness. And pray. And invite the spirits to come down to be with you. Ask for that Holy Ghost. That is our comforter, our guide. The one that comforts in a time of need. And right now, this coronavirus, that comforter can come down and comfort. Comfort. Bring comfort to one. Mm, thank you, Lord. Next week, we're going to take a journey back to Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to compare what they did then to today. So similar to each other. So closely related. We'll do that next week. Until then, have a good week. Keep safe. Keep well. And may God bless each and every one of you this coming week. Until Sunday, amen.